Hi everybody, I'm Greg. Welcome to Goodbye Gluten. Saying goodbye to gluten does not mean saying goodbye to great food and great taste. So please like this video, share it with friends, and subscribe to our channel. So today we are making fish and chips. So let's see what you're going to need to make this awesome dish your family's going to love. One tablespoon of baking powder. I like Clabber Girl because it is gluten free. See? Right there. Gluten free. Okay, one cup of cornstarch. One and a half cups of flour. This is gluten free Bob's Mill one to one. Uh, you want to divide it into two. One cup, one half cup. Okay, you want 12 ounces of like beer or cider. This is cider battered. Now, if you are non-alcoholic family, whatever like that, you could just use normal cider, which is quite fine. Or you can like go ahead and get a non-alcoholic beer. You want a few lemons or limes for garnishing and to squirt on the stuff when you're finished. A uh, quarter teaspoon of paprika and onion powder, one of each. You want a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay. And then a whisk and a spoon. And about two pounds of white fish fillet. These are cod. You can use trout or halibut or pollock. Uh, they're perfectly fine. Cod, I feel, is the best out of all of them. They taste the best. And they come in fillets like this, so they're really good. But for the video, I'm only using a, a one pound of fillets. Okay, because it's only going to be me and my son eating the fish today. Now, also for garnish, if you want, you can use a little spritz of malt vinegar or you can use apple cider or rice or none at all so let's get the cooking going okay for your chips section you can deep fry the chips which is quite fine uh, but what you'll have to do with that is cut up the potatoes first deep fry them in cooler oil like about 300 for about 10 minutes pull them out let them completely cool and then return them to a hotter oil when you want for the good, the crispiness, okay? But for the, right now, we are doing oven chips, which are going to be a lot better. You can go ahead and buy yourself like steak fries or french fries and put them in the oven, and that's quite fine. But I'm going to be showing you a way to do this uh, by scratch. So you need a bowl to toss your potatoes in, nice size cookie sheet couple of large russet potatoes easy this one's about oh five and a half inches long so that's a pretty good sized potato okay uh, they usually call them baking potatoes because they're great for a baked potato <laughs> okay you're gonna need yourself about a half a teaspoon of onion powder uh, half a teaspoon of paprika you can, uh, this is, these spices are optional. You can actually add a little chili powder, a little bit of uh, dried parsley. That's really good too. Uh, about a, a tea, half a teaspoon of black pepper and a half a teaspoon of salt. Of course, this is going to be grand or ground up. This is a uh, pink Himalayan sea salt, which is really good. You can use kosher or iodized, but if you're using the iodized tiny, tiny like table salt, then you want to do a little bit less salt because it is powerful. Okay, and a couple tablespoons of olive oil or vegetable oil is just fine. So let's see what you're going to need for the chip fish. Okay, so this is for your tartar sauce, which I love tartar sauce. Most of my family does not, so I don't have to share. Okay, you start with your base element, which a lot of people will use mayonnaise. I really don't like mayonnaise. I prefer Miracle Whip because it's better, tangier, zestier. Okay, you want about a teaspoon of lemon juice or the zest of a lemon and a little bit of the lemon juice. You want to season salt and paper to taste. 
about a half a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of onion powder or a granulated onion, that's fine. Or if you want, just go ahead and just chop up about, I'd say, a eighth of a medium onion and then sl just dice it really good. Now, you can use pickle relish, sweet pickle relish only. But if you don't have that, then you could basically make your own, which I got right here, which is basically one small sweet pickle diced up really fine and about two tablespoons of the pickle juice. Okay, so we're doing the tartar sauce first. Go ahead and get that cup of Miracle Whip, or mayonnaise if you want. I have a friend of mine who loves Flishman's, and I don't know why, because I don't like it. <laughs> okay, our little bit of lemon juice. We're going to take our pickles. Oh, it's already starting to smell really good. Take our little bit of onion powder. So about like that. Same with our paprika. Put that in there. salt as soon as I can open the thing okay just go ahead and stir it up now we're doing this uh, a little bit before making the rest of the stuff because we're gonna need to have to let the batter set and stuff so we're gonna make this ahead of time and then let it cool in the fridge Now I know some people will actually add mustard to their tartar sauce. Give it a taste. That's not bad at all. Okay, so now we're going to start with the batter. Take the first part of the flour, because we're not going to use the other part. And if it looks smaller, because I'm only doing a half a batch uh, for the vid actual video, but this will feed about six people four to six people so i basically halving all of the ingredients just for the video but you don't have to yes that's the ice cream man <laughs> driving by <laughs> uh, so paprika onion Like I said, you can actually add other spices that in there if you like, you know, Italian seasoning, basil, marjoram. Okay. I'm going to whisk this all together. trying to get rid of a lot of the actual foam and air inside this so best thing to do for these is you could let them sit overnight or you know for 12 hours open it just like pour it into a cup or a bowl and this way it gives rid of all that fizz okay but I forgot to do that <laughs> I 
forgot the baking powder. up that stuff faster. Okay, now we're going to let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. Why that's, we're doing that. I'm going to prep my cod fillets. Now you can leave them in large chunks if you want, like there are tons of people who love large fillets for their fish and chips. I like mine in a smaller fillet size. So, just go ahead and slice these babies. Uh, into one half inch sections by you know three inches kind of like almost like a fish stick because ah, they are a fish stick now you're like wait a minute he's not going with the grain this time they don't have to You just want to make sure your piece is all even. Now, if you have a thicker part of the fillet, you want that to be thinner. And if it's a thinner part, you want it to be wider. Okay. Now we'll get these into the refrigerator to, actually, no, we're just going to go ahead and leave them there because it's only going to be about 20 minutes. Let's prep the potatoes. Okay, so we got our potatoes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, like I said, I'm only doing half a batch, so half the potatoes. Now, you can just go ahead and chop them into really thin pieces, or you can cut them in half. And then do the exact same. So I'm actually going to go ahead and half them. Okay. Quarter them again. Quarter them again. So you see that? Simple, easy done. Or you could just simply do it like this. <laughs> Pretty fast, pretty easy. Make sure you wash your potatoes before you actually start messing with them because you don't want dirt in your food. little wedges. Okay. All aside. <clears throat> Get our olive oil. Now you can use other types of oil. Except crude oil and car oil. 
You don't want to add that in your food, do you? So, salt and pepper to taste, which I basically like pepper on mine. My son kind of likes a little lighter touch with the black peppers. White pepper is just as good. I like the peppercorns that are uh, bottles that have the multiple different colors. Those are really nice. Okay. Onion powder. And some paprika. Okay. And just go ahead and toss them until they're evenly coated. Swirl toss. Toss, swirl, toss, and you notice how they're starting to get nice and coated. This way I'm not having to mess with my hand, but if you want to, go ahead. But you get more on your fingers than you do on your potatoes. Okay, we've got that set up. Now here's the trick I want to show you guys. Yes, this is where I'm going to have to use my fingers. Okay, I'm going to set these guys up on their backsides. So the skin is down. Larger wedges to the edges, thinner ones into the middle. The reason why I like doing it with the skin side down first is because when they start to cook in the oven, they won't like connect or stay stuck and you have to like squish them or use a spatula. Okay, those are all prepped and ready to go. Okay, so this is my setup for the whole uh, deep frying aspect. I got my pan with the oil. I got a candy thermometer which is really great to tell what temperature the oil is because once you put a few pieces in there that oil temperature is going to drop so you don't want to just keep pumping stuff so you have to let that oil temperature heat up for a few seconds prior to putting in your next batch. A uh, cookie sheet with a wire rack in it which is really great for draining the grease off your fish and keeping the fish separated from the oil drip off. And then right here, I have a, a thing for to, to put my thing. And then this is a slotted spoon. Or, uh, ra I forgot what they call them. But you, you go to the Asian food store areas. And you can find these around wok sets. They're really awesome. I use this with my wok. And that's what I'll use for scooping out the fried fish out of the oil. Okay, while you're getting your batter set and let it set set your oven to 400 degrees so, and set your timer for 40 minutes because we're going to switch them to broil after the 40 are up for about five minutes okay so basically this is my cooking setup so i got my hot oil over here because i'm limited in counter space obviously for my oven and stove area if you have an island you know whatever that's good for you so i got my fish and dredging and batter there which basically you'll dredge dip it in the batter carry the bowl over dip them in there so we still got 33 minutes on there so i'm going to go ahead and start my oil heating up we're going to try to get this to 360 degrees, which is right there. Okay, so the cooking oil is at its proper temperature. And it's amazing how quick and fast this will go up and down. So we're going to work in batches. I'm going to do about four to five. Actually, we'll do six. Just do a light, quick dredging. If you want to salt your fish before you can or season it, go ahead. I'm not going to. I'm just going to.
going to go ahead and And why I'm, what am I doing this for? Why am I dredging? Because one thing this is going to need, the batter needs something to stick to. So I'm just going to go ahead and shake off the excess. And then right into the fryer. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and drop them in as small batches. Flip, flip. Clip. So you only want to cook these for about six minutes. Make sure they don't adhere to the bottom of your bowl. <laughs> Watch your fingers when you're putting exactly. them in the oil. Exactly. Okay. Okay, once you get your batch in, make sure you kind of move them around a little bit so they don't adhere to each other. Otherwise, you're going to have a clumpy mess and basically parts will be undercooked and then other parts will be overcooked. You want to try to also rotate them around to see how the light spot is trying to float to the top. Okay, it's basically been seven minutes, or almost eight minutes. Because you want to do six to eight minutes. Now the reason why these are kind of dark is because I basically reused some of our older oil, which basically is fine, long as you don't cook fish in it. And there, it's not over two weeks old. Yeah, once you've cooked fish in oil, dispose of it. Unless you're cooking more fish. But don't save oil with fish that. in it. Okay, we're going to check our potatoes. They look Ooh, awesome. Pretty. They're Ooh, kind they're of crispy. Pork tender. So I'm going to just go ahead and put the broiler on for just about five minutes on low. I'm going to let these cool because they are looking awesome. This was three minutes under the broiler. And here is your finished product, a nice healthy meal of cider battered fish and chips, all straight for your family to love.